Okay, let us start with the first slide, slide 52. Uh, skillful livelihood. Uh, skillful livelihood, you know, skillful, that means some, some, some of them is skillful, proper, correct, and right. And Ajiva is livelihood in Pali. So the guy, the Buddha said, actually, there is a very, very nice guideline uh, from the Buddha. He said, as long as it doesn't cause any harm to the doer of the job or to the others, you know, I'm performing the job and it, I, it's not causing me any harm and it doesn't cause any harm to the recipient, then it's considered to be simple. Um, when we talk about this causing harm, um, we actually have to look at it from a moral morality aspect. So why did the why why do you think uh, the Buddha actually teaches us this skillful livelihood? Why? Anybody can volunteer an answer? Well, you know, but a lot of people do not think like that. <laughs> That's why I'm here. <laughs> I just love this. <laughs> um, the means actually to sustain our life is our livelihood, isn't it? You have to not bigger, you know, <laughs> like this. Otherwise, I can't see. You, you, you don't need to be very humble now, okay? You just need to exaggerate, you know. But anyway, <clears throat> the means to sustain our life, that means our job, the way that we make money, the way that we make our living, the Buddha said, it should not interfere with our spiritual development. Okay? That's the most important thing. So one should earn a living in the most righteous way as much as possible. For a householder, he said that the one should gain one's wealth according to a certain level of morality and standards. So <clears throat> what kind of morality and what kind of standard? So one has to be very honest one has to earn the money or the wealth in a legal way, not illegal way. One has to make a living peacefully. And of course, the most important one is not to cause any harms to any beings. Do you think it's possible for us to list out all the, all the occupations involved to actually categorize them to be right? to be incorrect, it's impossible, right? Because sometimes there are so many weird occupations that we never heard of. Um, and all of some really a little business that we never hear of that actually are existing in the world. So um, it's impossible, but we need to use our own um, proper view you know, remember the first two um, uh, skill, uh, skillfulness that we talked about? The right intention, the proper intention, and the proper view, right? And that means the right thought. So we need to continuously check ourselves and reflect upon ourselves with these two um, uh, factors uh, in, in the head all the time. The proper thought and the proper intention. And the, okay? You still with me? Yeah. Good. Okay. So, <laughs> so it is really impossible uh, to list out all that skillful or unskillful occupations. But we can at least use this as a standard. But <clears throat> in uh, Antipara um, Nikaya, 
<coughs> that means <coughs> there's a, this a Nikaya, in this um, Nikaya section 5, um, or chapter 5, section 177. Actually, the Buddha said this five specific, specific kinds of occupations are the wrong rightly. We talk about that uh, while we talk about the uh, noble path we did. But I think uh, it's necessary to repeat it so that we could constantly uh, check on ourselves. So <clears throat> the first one is weapons, and you are aware. Weapons, not just the, the knives, the, the vegetable knives or the cutting knife. Uh, if you sell those uh, vegetables knives or cutting knives in a superstore, in a supermarket, it's not considered as illegal. It's not considered as unskillful because that's meant to be for cutting vegetables and fruits. Okay? So if people use them to hurt others uh, or to rob, it's not the vendor's responsibility. It's not the vendor's karma. You get it? Yeah. Good. <laughs> so, but here, he actually specifically meant armories, right? Um, missiles. Um, explosives in a way um, that actually are used more or, or guns used in more, or, or killing or hunting. So those are, those are specifically called weapons. When something that has an ability to cause harm to others with that kind of intention at the back. Get it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, and then the second one, the wrong livelihood, the second thing he said is uh, dealing with living beings. What does he mean by the living beings is including raising animals for slaughtering? And also <clears throat> trading off um, slaves, human being, or prostitutes, or <clears throat> um, you know, asking children to uh, to or asking children or some people to carry drugs. Yeah. So here, living beings is really causing the harm, but the drugs is actually the, the last one, the intoxicants one. Okay, so, so if people are raising llamas to look after the goat, is it a right livelihood? Raising llamas. Is it a, a, a proper livelihood? Yes, yes, right hand, no, left hand. Yes, yes, yes. But raising goat to be sold to others, to be slaughtered. So, right livelihood for yes, uh, right hand and wrong livelihood for left hand. Good. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> so we, you know, even even in a in a in a business, there are certain parts which it could which could be called proper, you know, uh, summer. Also, in the same livelihood, a part could be called unskillful. So we need to actually identify which part and see if we can uh, uh, rectify or correct that part. Okay? So, and then the, the third one is in meat production and butchery. 
So any meat uh, factories are considered to be unskillful. Uh, I think we talked about this when we a few times, a few weeks ago, when we talked about the meat factories. People don't seem to have any feelings, any emotions, uh, because they need to actually suppress themselves so much that they emotionally they they do not become talent. Because how can you kill so many animals in a day? If you are emotional, if you have feelings for animals, you can. It's impossible, right? Uh, I think the most famous uh, chicken factory in Canada start with an L. They they killed about um, ten thousand, no more than that, hundred thousand chickens a day. Hundred thousand. I don't think we even have 100,000 babies born in the world all together in one day. But 100,000 chickens, just chicken. So, you know, um, we need to actually think about that if we are in that kind of business or in that kind of um, uh, work. But luckily, you, 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 all of you are not in that kind of work. Otherwise, you will feel very, very down tonight. Okay. All right. And then the fourth one is dealing with poisons. What what does he mean by this, dealing with poison? What do you think? Something to kill a rat, maybe, or? Yes. Uh, can you give me a very, very solid example? What poison? Rat poison. Rat poison, yes, Nora, yes. Rat poison. Any kind of poison that kills any living being that consider anything that kills a living being considered to be poison. Rat poison, you know those cockroaches spray? Do we have that in Canada? Yeah. <coughs> oh I'm not. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm exaggerating too much, that's why I cough. Sorry. Sorry, just up in your ears. The piece in your ears. The the cockroaches, the spray, and sometimes even even the grass, you know the weed, the pesticide? The pesticide are considered to be poisonous. And and the grass, the, you know, the weed killer, those weed killer could be poison. It's it's not poison to the oh, it, it's poison to the weed that you can actually not consider it as, as unskillful. But if the pesticide cause any any harm to any living beings in that patch of field when we actually spray that killer, weed killer, then is considered to be um, uh, un unskillful. That invention of such pesticide is considered unskillful. So uh, I remember when I first came to Canada, when we actually um, planted a few patches of veggies, and there were so, so many slugs, right? Uh, so also people are giving us also uh, you know ideas about catching snugs and and drowning them and killing them. Uh, we never use anything. We just pick up the snugs, put them away, and when we grow those fruit trees, all those bugs, we never spray them. What do we use to keep the bugs away? We use vinegar and water. Bugs don't like vinegar and water, but they don't kill them. Uh, soap water and soap water that, that actually, you know, chase the bugs away. We don't kill them. So, of course, the intention of uh, using weed killer 
is not to kill any living beings. Uh, is the intention is to kill the, the the grass, the weeds. So if people are actually accidentally kill living beings by using weed killer, it's not considered us unskillful profession. Only when one design a weed killer it, with the intention of killing what kind of bugs around that, then it's considered to be uh, unrighteous. Right? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Somebody has a question? Yeah, yeah. Carrie. The gas production. Mm-hmm. What do you mean by gas production? Well, um, when they're digging up all the land to get the gas, the oil out of the ground, would that be considered? Yeah, but well, but they don't have the intention of killing the bugs. They just have an intention of digging up the ground, but accidentally, they kill a lot of beings. But they have to be responsible for that accidental killing, but not intentional killing. Right? Okay. Get it? Yeah. Okay. But if somebody dig up a gas, dig up, uh, you know, dig up the land for gas, and they use the gas, they use the gas chamber to kill living beings, that is, that's completely, completely and write this. Okay? All right. So the last one is intoxicants. So anything that actually intoxicates well being of our mind is considered as intoxicant. Whether it is uh, heroin, whether it is hot, it's liquor, or whether it is just whatever that actually um, disturb our well-being of our mind, of the clarity of our mind. So we lose that clarity and we easily, we easily start to kill, start to steal, and start to commit sexual misconduct, and start to lie. Any, 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 any of that morality, but because our mind intoxicated. So we don't have that clarity, we don't have that precision, and we don't have that self-control. So we easily break any one of the bell four. So those are considered as in. So when people start to watch TV games, or start to play those um, uh, TV games, if if they get so obsessed that they repeated what they actually was playing. So that particular TV game is, I, I think, and I feel, is considered to be toxic. Uh, it, it's not something necessarily that you need to ingest. It's something that actually affects the stability and control of your mind. Right? Because remember those uh, two girls uh, two years ago, uh, two young girls, the juveniles, the three friends all together, and the two, be, th- they, they kept playing one TV game. Uh, and then the two decided to repeat that TV game. So they killed a friend to please the person in the TV game. Remember that happened in, in America two years ago. So that is that TV game. That TV game is very unrighteous. And those three juvenile uh, girls were intoxicated by that TV game. So the intention of the person who is actually inventing that TV game, I think is completely poisoned also the mind. Otherwise, nobody can, can create such a TV game. Unless one's mind is uh, uh, intoxicated himself. Okay, question again. Carrie, did you put up your hand? No, not this time. Okay. 
Oh, that's the back of the chair. All right, so, so there are actually three steps of inquiry. And we can actually consolidate the, the, the last slide with this one. When we, when we gradually go through this one. So the first step of inquiry is, is it inherently a wrong occupation? So we can look at it uh, uh, step by step. And the second step is, is, does it lead to any breaching of my own morality? Okay. Or does it cause any distraction, disruption, disturbance to the well-being of my mind? So these three steps of inquiry actually are at a guidelines of how we should look for a job, what kind of job we should actually pursue. All right, so the first one is it inherently a wrong occupation. That's very easy, does it cause harm to oneself and to others? So fighting in war, hurting one and hurting others is definitely not the right, right, right profession. So what do you mean, what do you think by enrolling in an army? <laughs> is it, is it improv, is it a, a it's, not, it's not an ideal profession? No, no, no. Um, no, it's really not, even though one, 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 a lot of people, they always say, oh, I, I go to the army, I go to the Navy because I want to defend our country. When one is defending one's country, one needs to actually hurt others. So when your profession is hurting others, is no matter what your, your reason is, that is still unrighteous, unrighteous and still, okay? So the second thing we talk about, does it involve the manufacturing, the buying, and the selling, promoting, encouraging, or using guns and weapons? So uh, in, in North America, this gun thing, this gun thing is a big, big problem. And, I, and you know, for the last 20 years I've been in Canada, Actually, for the last 10 years, I, I have seen so many, so many tragedies actually came from guns. And when we lose that self-control, the first thing we think is using something for revenge. And if you see that there is a gun, a lot of times when people cannot contain their anger, their hand would just reach out for the gun. So seeing those things, having those things around in home is actually a risk. People say, oh, I, I, I want the guns here because I want to protect myself. Uh, I think it actually poses more risk than protection. Right? Yeah, so does it, does it involve guns? Hurting human beings, hurting animals. Destroying the peace and harmony of the society, and and also ruining the environment. About ruining the environment, uh, when we talk about poisons, now there's something come up to my mind is um, firecrackers, um, fireworks. I think that is an. I think that is a unrighteous uh, uh, profession. What do you think? When you say again, you say righteous? Unrighteous. Unrighteous. I think Not righteous. It, is, it upsets dogs and scares things and puts smoke out into the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, and it, it actually is, they are explosives. They are explosives, and so uh, from, from me, I think it is not very skillful, not skillful at all. I'm glad that we don't have uh, the right to uh, play firecrackers in, in Canada. In China, where I went last week, is a place where they produce 
a lot of firecrackers and fireworks. And uh, you can you can see uh, you can see firecrackers all the time all throughout the day. When people die, they 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 burn firecrackers. When people get married, they burn firecrackers. Full moon, half moon, and it's they they find all also reasons to burn firecrackers. And and every set I think it's every second Saturday. Along the river, they have half an hour of fireworks display. Every other Saturday, and thousands of people gather at the uh, at the uh, pier to look at the fireworks. I saw it once, and I looked at it. I said, "This is very unskillful, wasting money, um, actually ruining, destroying the environment." Right. Okay, and then does it involve any toxic drugs? So we look at that last from the last slide. So the last slide is actually talking about all this a wrong, inherently a wrong occupation. So basically, all these are um, unskillful. Okay, so. And also, when we talk about the intoxicants, where when when medications are prescribed not for the sake of curing and an illness, and if somebody is producing such thing just to make money, then it's considered and still. So you go into a you go into a vitamin shop. You see ooh, all these vitamins. Do we need all those? Are we really that sick that we need so much vitamins? Huh? I I can I can believe that. And also, yes, milk is good for bones. They kept saying, good for children's health. But they continuously. Are putting a lot of wrong information about the goodness of milk, and that's a very, very wrong, wrong, wrong intention. Because they want to make big business, big money for the production of milk. So even with the production of milk, if people have the wrong intention in the back, and it actually doesn't. Bring so much benefit, and it, it does cause a lot more harm. Then there is a part that is called unskilled, right? If you read the book for I can't remember the China's tale or China story, it's talking about a professor went to China to do some research. About osteoporosis, and he went deep into the villages and the countryside, and he saw actually osteoporosis is almost zero, even in very old people, zero, because they never had a chance to drink milk, and they always because in the villages they always pump. But when he did research in very affluent Countries like North America, America, Canada, Switzerland, osteoporosis, the rate of osteoporosis is way high, almost fifty percent, or even more. Why? Because we consume so many milk products, and children or teenagers, even adults, drink so much milk. Firstly, because they They thought milk is good for bones because the doctor says so. The milk production company says so, and everybody says so. So they think it's good, so they drink. And and the 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 more milk they drink, the less the less calcium they have in the bones. 
Yes, they have the nutrients in the milk. But our integral milk, we want is to get the calcium from the milk. But we, as human beings, after we stop milk feeding, when we were one or two, we don't need the milk anymore because we cannot absorb calcium from the milk. So, so that's one idea. That's one actually ethics that people are hiding from a lot of people. The milk production company, mm, the pharmaceutical fir firms, the medical professions, everybody is hiding. Everybody. So if you want to read that book, it's called The China Story, and also uh, by Robert Williams, uh, The Diet of, of the 20th Century. They all mention about this thing. So it's not that we don't use milk, but we can use only moderate, but not too much, not thinking it's the, it's the, it's the curing medicine for osteoporosis. Okay. So those are the misleading directives. And excessive pro uh, prescription of drugs with an intention of making one wealthy and rich, or uh, one's company uh, famous and rich, is considered the Okay? All right. So the second thing is, does it lead to any breaching of my own morality? So, our famous Devadatta, do you remember who he is? Anybody remember who is Devadatta? Who is he? Who was he? Huh? Yeah, cousin. Cousin of the Buddha. Oh, thank you. <laughs> cousin of the Buddha, of course, being cousins and um, being born in the in the Buddha's year, um, they had a long history of connection, okay? So when in one of the past lives, both the Buddha and Devadatta in that past life were uh, 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 like they sell, they sell pots and pens. So they go around, they go around the, the country, to the, the village to sell pots and pens. One day when the when the data came to a house and uh, he saw a pretty, very pretty golden bowl, golden red bowl, and the, the householder said to him, if you pay me, you know, enough money so that I could buy a trinket, then you can have this uh, 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 golden bowl. And the data want to deceive this woman and he said, your bowl doesn't work for anything. It's worthless. How can you buy, how can you ask me to give you enough money to buy a trinket? And uh, you, you try to lie to us. You, the Vedata said to the woman. Anyway, of course, the Vedata woman, in the back of his mind, he think, if he said this, then when he come back again, this woman will give the bowl to, to him with very, very little money. So he went away, he went to sell more pots and pens, so he comes to Buddha, dum, 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 okay. I saw this pretty bowl and, 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 and the woman came up, oh, you selling pots and pens? You want to buy my bowl? It's very pretty. The Buddha said, oh yes, it's very pretty. Okay, what, how much do you want? And the woman said, I just want enough money for, for a trinket. The Buddha said, there you go, that's enough money for a trinket and much more for you to, you know, buy other things. The woman was so happy, so give the Buddha the bowl. The Buddha said, oh, this is a very precious bowl. I can do a lot of things with this bowl. I can sell this bowl with more money, getting all that money, and I can help more pe poor people. So the Buddha took the bowl and go to the river and get on the boat and row, 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 row down the river. And then my daughter went back to the woman's house, not very, not very, very soon, and asked the woman, where's your bowl? They said, oh, somebody came, somebody came, bought it. 
And so he followed. He got so crazy and yelling and follow, follow. And he eventually get to the shore, to the beach, and he saw, he saw the Buddha. So, so Devadatta was, you know, insane. He was so angry, and he said, "Come back, come back, come back." And the Buddha said to the to the boat, the boat owner said, "Keep rolling, keep rolling, going, keep going." Devadatta was so angry. On the beach, he ripped off all his clothes. He kept yelling and screaming and yelling and screaming. He did not stop screaming and getting so angry that blood actually gushes out from his, from his mouth, and his heart just split, and he just died. That's how he ended his life because of this golden boy, one of the lifetimes, and you can see. You know how cunning, how angry this uh, Devadatta was, and no wonder why. No wonder that he when during the, the Buddhist time he tried to kill the Buddha straight time. Remember the story? He tried to um, uh, block an uh, elephant, and this drunken elephant came to try to uh, kill the Buddha. And the Buddha just keeps sending metta and metta, and the elephant. As soon as the elephant reached the Buddha, he actually knelt down to pay respect to the Buddha. So, and one time he actually pushed a big piece of rock from top of the mountain when the Buddha went out for alms, and the rock actually hurt the little little toe of the Buddha. So that Devadatta was, you know, a very very considered to be an unskillful person and breaching of his own morality. So, so that's the story of Devadatta selling pots and pens. So eventually the Buddha actually sold the golden bowl and used the money for very, very good reasons, the very good causes. And so we have to keep checking ourselves is is my profession consider any any preaching of the own purpose? Uh, I saw a, a a wonderful I watched a wonderful movie on the plane. It's called The Judge. I don't know whether you watch it. If you haven't watched it, it's a wonderful movie. It's talking about an old judge. Um, actually killed a released inmate uh, because he he thought it was injustice, uh, and his son was a lawyer, and he tried to, to fight off that um, that um, conviction uh, for his dad. But he said eventually when he took the stand, told the truth. And he was very old at that time, but he had, he had a very clean and good reputation in the in the in that part of the country for forty five years of being a very justified judge, very good judge, a very fair judge. But just once, he killed his release inmate um, because he raped and killed a young girl. And when he was released, they met at the at the at the store, and the judge wife just passed by, just passed by, they sat on that day, and uh, that he may said to the judge, "Now your wife just passed on. Very soon I can pee on her grave and yours." And the judge was so angry, and because he was very upset, he was going through a brief period, and he was worried about this person peeing on his wife's grave. And so he turned back. Uh, where after he bought the milk or egg, he turned back, and he intentionally drove into this person who was on a bike and good. 
So when he took the stand, his son was trying to, you know, uh, clean him. But eventually, he admitted his own, own crime. He said, I intentionally killed him. So he was convicted uh, into prison, I think, five years of, of second-degree murder. Um, because, I don't know, I don't know, I can't remember why it was so, so uh, short sentence. But anyway, he was released for medical reasons and he died um, having, you know, rectified the situation with his son. It's a wonderful, emotional, very touching movie and also... Um, when we look at this, is is there any breaching of my own morality? And the judge said, I want to remain a good judge. When people talk about me, they remember me of there's a good judge, a good person. So if anybody is abiding by morality and what they present in others' eyes are a good person, a person with Morales. We, we we are not we are not intending to get praises from people. They're supposed to be, right? Supposed to behave like. Okay. Devadatta, Devadatta, Devadatta. Okay. So the third one is the third the criteria we have to reflect is does it cause any distraction? Disruption and disturbance to the well-being of my own mind. The Buddha said, any, any profession, any way of making money should not be an obstacle for our own spiritual development. Remember that. That is a very, very important, crucial point to remember. But sometimes it's very difficult when you have you know, unfriendly, unfriendly uh, uh, co-workers, when you have very rude clients, it's very difficult to maintain, not to lie, not to use harsh words. When you have very difficult students, It's very difficult to upkeep that morale. <laughs> so, but we need to constantly reflect upon ourselves. You know, uh, does it really cause any distraction to our mind? A disruption of this equanimity, this balance, and this disturbance of my own development. We need to constantly reflect. If we start to reflect, we know this is disturbing, this is distracting. Okay, then there is this awareness there, there is this mindfulness there, and you will not go as far as you used to go. So every time you take one little step backward, every time you take, you take one little step backward, so it, eventually you will take more steps, or eventually you will not react in that way and cause so much disruption and disturbances to our own well-being, the mental well-being, I mean. So, so moral principles really count. So, remember these moral principles because these are the reminders for us when we start to deal with people, when we start to talk, when we start to think, when we start to act. So the moral principles are mental parts, mental ability. And all this mental ability will reflect itself in our bodily actions, our verbal actions, our mental actions. So we do not want to take any part in any actions that are unethical. So that's why the Buddha said, in your slide 57, it said, do not become a merchant of the Dhamma. What does he mean by this? What do you mean by a merchant of the Dhamma? Selling trinkets or something? Selling what? Selling, selling trinkets or trying to um, make money off of it or 
Yeah, make make money off the Dhamma. What he meant by the Dhamma here is his teachings. Okay, not the not the truth. If you look around the world now, actually a lot of people are making money using the Dharma in a way for their own own life, not for the charity of others, not for the well being of others. You agree? Yeah. So you agree and please give me an example why you agree. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Well, even though uh, people charge you something, if they do not pocket them themselves, yeah. not for their own use, then it's, it's, it's okay. They do need to pay all of, like all the utilities, right? Yeah. As long as anything, as long as they teach and they get whatever money, but they do not have a share. Let, let's say, okay, okay, if Poland starts to charge you $10 a session for Dharma sharing, and Sister Jessie is getting five bucks out, that's it, okay? Or I say, no, five bucks is not enough. I need seventy percent of your of, of your uh, donations. Yeah. Uh, people people using the Dharma, uh, to to publish books, to write, to do a lot of audios, to do a lot of lectures, but all the money they get back, I said all. Oh, they deserve a part of it to, you know, for example, to get a, a, a sort of a salary, a reasonable salary, but not all the profits back to his own pocket. Get it? So we have to be very, very, very careful. A lot of people think that, oh, well, when I come, when, 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 uh, there is this uh, religious setting in the nunnery. Uh, we, uh, we should not get the we should not get the pay, or uh, I cannot take money from 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 the temple because it's a charitable place. No, no. You come and walk in a in a in a temple in a church or in a nunnery. You are giving in your efforts, and you deserve you deserve to have a pay but not overpay to get, you know, uh, over benefit. Understand? That's what he meant is by don't become a merchant of the Dharma. Okay? And any action that we would like to correct ourselves is that the goal is to develop this loving kindness. Anything has to be motivated by loving kindness, by acceptance, by understanding for others, and by wanting to bring benefits to others. So we have to be constantly mindful about these intentions. Okay? So when we, when we constantly reflect on this, we actually trying to protect and nourish our mind rather than causing harm to our mind. So in the, in the famous Dhammapada, verse 124, the Buddha said, the palm without wounds can hold poison safely. What does he mean by that? Anybody who has the very, very clear, clean morale is just like a person palms no injuries, and because there is no no bricks in the skin, then even though you hold poison, 
you will not be harmed. Poison does not enter. So evil does not penetrate a person who doesn't, who does have a clean morale. Okay? So he used this um, uh, simile uh, to tell us the importance of morality, tell us the importance of uh, proper life. So mindfulness of a skillful livelihood is first thing our means of sustenance, a way to sustain our own life should not interfere with our own spiritual development. That's the first thing. Second thing is we have to reflect upon the nature of our job according to those three tiers. Remember those three tiers. First tier <laughs> is the inherently a wrong, a wrongful uh, uh, occupation. Okay. Secondly, does it cause any breach to my own morality? The third tier, does it cause any disruption, disruption, disturbance to my own mental uh, and spiritual development? Okay. So you can go back. Oh, actually, I put it here. First is inherently harmful to living beings. Second is causes us to breach our own moral standards. The third one is causes distraction, disturbance to our own mind. Okay? And then, when we become mindful, this skillful intention has a very important part to play in the decision of picking, a prof picking up one profession or taking up a certain job. Okay? And also, this, the skillful livelihood, what kind of goal do we want in this life? The goal of cultivation of happiness and the goal of cultivation of liberation? With this goal in our mind, then when we constantly reflect and be mindful of these goals, then we easily easily, it can actually lead us to decide whether this job is a skillful job or not a skillful job. Okay? So, does it bring forward happiness and ease of mind? So, so simple. Why is skillful livelihood very important? And why does the mindfulness of life on skillful livelihood bring so much happiness? So simple. Any questions? No? Okay. All right. 